Hey y'all, I had a couple of questions <laughs> that came up on the kind of how, how we do stuff thread. And um, so I thought I'd maybe combine a couple of them and answer them. Uh, one of the questions came from my friend Chris Awalt. And um, he asked how we have, there's little ants. How, how do we have um, iced tea in the summer? Well, it's not the summer right now. It is, you know, May, early May, but it is hot. So it's about 93, 94 degrees. One of the other questions I got was, um, how do you stay cool in, when it's hot? So um, I'm going to kind of talk about both of those things. I don't drink that many iced drinks, um, not merely because we live off grid and don't have ready uh, available availability of ice, but because I just don't drink ice that much. It's, uh, it's kind of a, um, it's a luxury. So every once in a while, my wife will give me a drink or my daughter will give me a drink of uh, some, some iced lemonade or something. Um, to, to start off with this whole idea, I, I think I ought to uh, uh, start with kind of a, a re-explanation of the bunker principle. And that is that uh, we start off with a foundation, an understanding in our infrastructure of how we would do things and learning how to do things without any uh, industrial production consumer products and we learn how to do it that way and we learn how to live that way and then you know if if we want to have um, ice you know commercially bought ice or something like that then we can do it but the basics is that we want to learn how to live without it and because for a lot of different reasons we kind of live you want to call them gears or phases but based on if we have money which normally we don't have much money uh, we were able to to shift up or shift down uh, right now if I, I was going to start this video in the cottage uh, to show you the ice box we have an ice box which is a uh, probably early 20th century uh, ice box where uh, ice goes into the top and then the bottom section is your refrigerator, the cool air drops into the lower section and you keep stuff in there. Um, of course, for that device to work, you have to have ice, and right now we don't have any ice. Here in a couple of hours, you know, when Danielle, uh, my wife, gets back, we'll probably have some ice. She'll probably pick some up. You know, we don't make a special trip to get ice usually. Sometimes we do, but not usually and uh, we don't need it it's not necessary most of the things that we preserve we preserve it they, they, they don't need refrigeration it is nice to have some ice every once in a while and it does get a little bit expensive during the summer now our our, our goal our long-term plan is to build an ice house and with an ice house we would be able to harvest ice or make ice all winter we have cold enough winters here even in a warm winter like like this year where we could put up enough ice that it would make us probably a good way into the summer, if not all the way through the summer, depending on how big the ice house is. We could make enough, as much ice as you want. And, uh, and, the, and the way to do that is fairly simple. So you would just have forms and you would fill the forms on the days when you know you're going to have hard freezes. And then you would stack that um, ice into the ice house, which is heavily insulated uh, and built properly. And then you would have ice when you need it. But I don't want to get people into the idea that somehow ice is a necessity. Where I am right now, uh, most people did not have ice until about 70 or 80 years ago. Um, although there was electricity uh, certainly available before then, most people in rural uh, Texas didn't have it. And uh, ice was harvested, even in uh, areas like this. Uh, even today, many, many small towns in Texas, especially if you're in eastern Texas where the uh, uh, concept of drinking wasn't was it as uh, taboo as it is uh, ha has been uh, quite a few times in west texas uh the places where you got ice was called an ice house and that was also where you got beer and that's why many uh bars in texas are still called ice houses so the ice house is is a is a way to do that and we hope to build an ice house at some point, but it's not a big priority because ice is not a priority. And uh, most of the world, most of the people that have lived on the planet uh, spent most of their time since they lived in the, in the temperate zones and in the uh, areas around the equator uh, the, uh, without ice. And so although the Persians were really good at getting ice into the desert, um, 
and most people had uh, that lived in Europe, especially Northern Europe, had uh, the ability to store ice. Northern America, Minnesota, and places would have ice houses where they would store ice. And again, uh, as far as Texas, uh, ice has not ever been uh, that much of a priority. So uh, that's a long way to say that um, I don't drink that many drinks with ice, and I'm not going to drink any today because I don't have any ice. But what I have made is a concoction, a refreshing concoction for a hot day. And it took me five minutes to make it, and it's been sitting for about an hour. Now what's in here is uh, sage, rosemary, uh, mesquite, fresh new mesquite leaves. These are, this is, and, and this this would be a drink for this time of year. Later on, you know, a couple of months, we'd have peaches and other things available, uh, other other herbs available as well. That about ag agarito ber agarita berries, I get corrected on that. I say it wrong. I think the official terminology is agarita, that wasp wants me, or wants my beverage. Agarita is how you say it. Agarita berries. And what I did is I crushed those in a mortar and pestle. I crushed the basil a little bit too, just to bruise it. Put a little bit of, just a touch of rosemary in here. And a mesquite, handful of mesquite leaves that I bruised up a little bit. And then I, um, I put just a touch of honey and just a touch of apple cider vinegar. And it's been sitting for about an hour. I've got an old milk um, strainer. It's an old beat up one, it's got tape on it, but it works. And I got another jar here. And so, hopefully without making too much of a mess, I'm gonna pour, I'm probably gonna spill some. Uh, I'm gonna pour, pour this uh, drink through here and strain it. You wouldn't have to do this, you could drink it right out of here. And I kept the seeds in from the agarita, all that, because those are very high vitamin C. All right, let's see if I can do this without making too much of a mess. My hat may blow off too. It's a little breezy, but that's why I'm sitting out here. Um, I did make a little bit of a mess. But uh, to go to go into answering the other question, how do you stay uh, how do you stay cool when it's hot? You know, the best thing to do is to be outside. Um, shade is wonderful, especially in this area of Texas where it's uh, remarkably cooler in the shade. You catch a nice breeze. Find a place. You, you learn to find the places where the breezes are, where the cooler places. Down by my office is one of the coolest places on the land. It's probably 10 or 15 degrees sometimes. Sometimes 5 or 6, which is a big difference. The root cellar is very, very cool. Um, the cistern is cool. I don't get in the cistern. But the water in there is 50 or 60 degrees, and, and you can get some of that water out and have a cool drink. One of the things you could do with this drink is you can put a, a jar uh, lid on it really, really tight, and you put a string on it and drop it down in the cistern, and you would be surprised how cool <coughs> that tastes when it's 100 degrees outside when that water is 56 or 57 degrees and, and, and your little refreshing drink. So I'm gonna try this. I know it's gonna be good. It's got a little bit of the pink tint of the uh, agarita. Now, if I had let this sit for several days, it would have started to ferment. And it basically would have made something like a small beer, maybe a low, very low alcohol uh, beverage, but it would have gotten carbonated. It actually would have started carbonating. So you might make some of this in advance and then <clears throat> drink it on the second, third, fourth day. And it would have been the equivalent to a 18th century a small beer. Let me see what we got. Oh, that's very refreshing. It's, um, it's got a little bit of uh, acidity from the uh, apple cider vinegar, which is good, which makes it almost like a lemonade. It's got sweetness from the honey and from the uh, agarita and it's got a lot of fullness of flavor from the herbs. That right there would set you right. In addition, I've got uh, home, homemade beer down in the root cellar. The root cellar this time of year is in the 60s, um, so it's real cool down there to go down there during the heat of the day. Here pretty soon we'll have peaches available, and so you could do something like this with peaches. All right, so I think I answered a couple of the questions. Um, the answer to the, the long-term answer to how do you have iced tea in the summer is you don't unless you do. Talk to y'all later.